What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video that nobody asked for. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Rolex brand and the big question, what the hell is going on with them? So about a year ago, Rolex has introduced to us their line of Oyster Perpetual. They've been saying that this is going to be a more affordable and an entry level watch for the Rolex. And this was exciting on paper. This was absolutely amazing. 100 meters of water resistance. 70 hours of power reserve, a great, great entry-level Rolex, more affordable for everybody, and just a great daily wearer. Now, with that being said, I was also thinking that, sure, maybe a Rolex will not do anything about all of those wait lists for all of the, their other models, but simply because they're giving us a more affordable watch, more for the poorer class, I guess. It's easier to save $5,000 rather than 10 or 20, right? So yes, this watch was going for around $5,600 retail, brand new, which was amazing. So I was thinking that even if they don't do anything about their other watches, I was hoping that the supply for this watch will be different because they're making this watch more affordable and obviously more people will afford and more people will want it. I was thinking that the supply will be totally different on this watch. Well, it happens that I was very, very wrong. Now these watches, although they're being entry level, everybody wants them, everybody is, is looking to get them, and this was expected. This was expected because you're giving a product at a much lower cost. That's like Mercedes making the A-Class that you know starts at $35,000 or so. So now not only is Mercedes affordable for the richer class, now even I can afford one, per se, a brand new one. Rolex has done nothing when it comes to the supply. This watch is just like every other watch. It's not easy to get. And you would think, what would this watch go on the secondary market for? Like, it shouldn't be that crazy, should it? Well, you'd be surprised because I'll tell you, you're very wrong. This watch on the secondary market, uh, such as Chrono 24, it goes for about 16 to 25 thousand dollars now this watch comes in a lot of colors such as candy pink green yellow coral red and turquoise i'm sure i butchered the name or the, the the name of the color so i'll just call it light blue patience with me please now all of these watches go except the, the light blue go for around that price 15 to about twenty five thousand dollars which is absolutely nuts to know that you can get a very iconic Submariner Hulk, which is very hard to find for around $25,000. Why would I get an Oyster Perpetual? Now, with that being said, we understand that it's not Rolex's fault on why these watches go so expensive. You know, the people are just absolutely insane at pricing these watches. They're giving them such a value that, you know, it can only be as valuable as people are willing to pay for, right? And people are willing to pay $25,000. That is why they're worth so much. Where Rolex's fault comes in is the supply. Because you can't get them. If you want it, you'll spend the premium dollar. Now, about two months ago, Patek has introduced to us the new 5711 as a celebration of 170th anniversary of collaboration with Tiffany & Co. Now, when they did that, they've only released... 870 watches because this 170th anniversary makes sense but what does not make sense is that pretty much all of the Patek watches you have to be on a wait list you can't just go buy them like that that's one two giving us 170 pieces to the 8 billion people that we are in this world is not a drop in the bucket that is a drop in the whole freaking ocean it's crazy so obviously guys like Jay-Z, guys like Mark Wahlberg, and all of these guys, they're getting the watches. And people, and myself too, started thinking, you know, because that light blue Tiffany Co, Tiffany dial, Tiffany color, is so nice, what other watches maybe have that dial? Well, it's the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. They have released it in the light blue, like, just like I told you guys. And to my surprise, when you go on the secondary market to look what this watch is going for how much do people value it at now keep in mind you could buy this watch a month and a half ago brand new for around $5,600 on the secondary market for around 15 to 20 
Well, now you get this watch on the secondary market, so obviously used, $55,000. And this is the average asking price for it. This watch has gone up in price about 10 times. 10 times. This is absolutely nuts. And if you go on Chrono 24 right now, just like I do here, you can find the watch for as high as 80, 90, even 100,000 euros. Bro, this is out of this world. This is not normal. This is not normal. You can't be buying a product that costs $5,000 and then a month later sell it for a hundred thousand. This just makes no, this is stupid. This is stupid. And the big question is why doesn't Rolex supply the demand? Because they don't keep any of the profit. You buy the watch for 5,600 and when you sell it, everything that's above that, you pocket it. You take it home. It's your money. It's not Rolexes. They don't take those money. So why do they like that? Why do they like that their product gets sold on a secondary market for 10 times the price? This just makes no sense. Rolex doesn't pocket any of those money. What Rolex pockets is a bigger name. That's all. They just love to know that people that have a lot of money choose to hold on to those money, put their name on a stupid wait list, hoping that a year, two years, three years from now, they'll be able to get that watch. And that watch is gonna be a Rolex. That's what they absolutely love. They love that they tricked us into not buying another watch or a, a different brand, but waiting and waiting and waiting for an actual Rolex. I don't know if that makes sense, but we do that. We do that no matter what. This is, this is like a part two of my previous video talking about why you should be getting Rolex this year, but now we're going deeper into numbers. And if this doesn't make any sense, I don't know what does. Because as stupid as it sounds, I would love to know that I spend, you know, $6,000 on a watch and now I get to, you know, keep it and know that the watch costs 30. This is absolutely phenomenal what they have done with, it's just a simple product. Yes, their quality is nice. The build, it's amazing. They've got long history. They've got... Yes, their watches are special, but not 10 times the value special. It's we, it's us who gave it the power. It's us who gave them the power and then took their product and skyrocketed in value. It's, it's our fault. And it just, this whole bubble, people think that Rolex is in a bubble now. You know, in the last five years, it, it's been, it, it's ready to explode. It's ready to burst. But I'm here to tell you that it's not going to do it. It's not, they're building a bigger name. And I'm still surprised that there's not a topic going around the watch world saying that Rolex is potentially um, gonna become a part of the Holy Trinity. Obviously one of them's gonna have to go. Even non-watch people know of Rolex. Non-watch people, they think Rolex is the God of watches. And it, it makes sense, like I'm, I'm not blaming them. It's they've done a phenomenal marketing job. They've put, they've become so big. Their name is all over the watch community. Everybody wants them. And if you are thinking to get a Rolex, now's the time to get it, now. And if for whatever reasons you don't care about Rolex as much, don't get it. There are watches that are, you know, same build quality and same, rich history and just phenomenal specs that you can get and um, if you would like me to make a video talking about what other watch brands are out there that uh, are even better than Rolex that are more affordable or maybe if not more affordable at equal pricing but with a better accessibility with that being said I'll catch you in the next video take care fuck <laughs>